Meeting for Thursday, March 24th, the first item on the agenda is a salute to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I make a motion we change the agenda to remove items one and two. I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Excellent. I make a motion we approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, having no old business, uh, we... I oh. oh um, at our last meeting, uh, Mr. Long had brought up a question about the uh, school warrants and there are going to be two school warrants that are going to go on the um, town meeting for uh, replacement of the um, uh, intercom system for the school at a price of $25,000 and another warrant article for um, repair to the roof on the gym uh, for $25,000 uh, as happened since the last meeting and I just wanted to correct that those two warrant articles will be uh, going forward on the June 4th. That's it? Yep. Okay. Moving on to new business. Our first item on the agenda is Mr. Jack Kelly. Uh, first, let me tell you, uh, I asked the uh, Mouse and Lake Association board members to be here tonight, but uh, they really don't want to get involved in town politics. They're a nonprofit organization, but they wanted to express their disappointment. So I'm here on my own. Uh, I just want to, you know, express my disappointment on your decision to withdraw from negotiations for the interlocal agreement with the towns of Shapley and Sanford. Um, I just feel as though. Uh, you know, there was no public hearing about the decision. The decision affects a lot of property owners in this town on Mousem Lake, Square Pond, and Loon Pond. 75% of the tax base. You have a vested interest in what happens with that dam and also the Square Pond Dam. You, now we won't have a, any voice in water levels on maintenance. And the maintenance, the total cost of maintenance a year is $10,000. Shapley just voted at their town meeting $3,000 for maintenance, and they're also putting it $10,000 a year into a rainy day fund. Um, I just feel as though this was a poor decision, and I've attended all the meetings since. And if I didn't attend those meetings, I'll read it in the paper, there was no public announcement or anything. And we, we actually, the, Article 27 last year was amended that you were going to go there and negotiate an agreement for consideration or approval by the town meeting. That has been done. You just decided on your own to just drop negotiations. The other thing is you mentioned a figure of an increase of 13 cents in the tax rate and both the uh, Shapley selectmen disputed that amount. So. Uh, that's, I mean, I just don't understand how you can, you know, a couple of people can decide an important issue like this. It affects a lot of property and 75% of your tax base. Um. I mean, I, I'm asking, you know, like, you know, to reconsider your decision or at least let the people of the town have a decision in this, put an article before a town meeting. If they decide they don't want to pursue it, but I don't think it's right that three individuals make a decision like this. Okay. Bill, do you wish to comment on this? The decision was made based on what we felt was best for the town of Rackham. Uh, there was complete uh, entrenchment. So the refusal from the part of Sanford to negotiate a lower uh, or a different split. Uh, the request that uh, we made, or the town made, was that uh, Sanford pick up 50% of the cost, Shapley 25 and Acton 25. Sanford absolutely rejected this. Uh, offered no possible 
uh, or indicated no possible compromise. So, in our opinion, this would not pass the town meeting. The town would not come up with this kind of money. So the uh, decision was made to tell them we were withdrawing from the discussion. And, uh, you know, it's, we received a letter back finally uh, from uh, Sanford, uh, an email, where they said, uh, well, if you ever change your mind or something, call us, but we're going to go forward. And they're going forward spending more money than, either, you know, than what we were asking them to give up. Well, go ahead. In, in the, uh, you know, in the uh, split up of the, uh, the capital cost. We were perfectly willing to go forward with the, uh, the maintenance. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I, I, you know, I was at those negotiations. I sat right there with you, yeah. and you know, my my feeling was that that you know, Mark Green said it. If it comes down to a decision where Sanford, where we're going to put money into that dam or repair their roads, they're going to repair their roads, and who benefits from the Mousin Lake? and Square Pond, and Loon Pond. Who benefits from it? The town of Acton, the town of Shapley. You have all your properties, your ta your, I mean, these are all taxable properties, values. If Mousam Lake turns into Mousam River, what's gonna happen to your tax base? What's gonna happen to this town? For a small investment every year, it's just like any investment property. You have to do maintenance. This is part of it. Mr. Kelly, we offered to rewrite the agreement to simply be part of the maintenance. It came down to um, the, the long-term capital improvement costs. And the, so first off, the proposal was the 50, 25, 25. They said, well, don't you think it's fair to do a three-way split evenly? And I said, yes, yes I do. If that three-way split is based on tax effect. So the town of Acton, every time we raise through taxation $100,000, it costs our taxpayers 18 cents on their mill rate. When the town of Sanford raises $100,000, it raises their mill rate by seven cents. That was the number that Mark Green gave us in that meeting. Why should the townspeople of Acton be expected to have their, ta their mill rate affected by more than twice what the people of Sanford have their rate affected by in the name of an equal three-way split? An equal three-way split was what we offered, it's what we asked for, but an equal three-way split that was of the effect of taxation, because that's really what matters. It's not that each town comes up with $100,000. It's a question of how much money comes out of each individual taxpayer's pocket. Yeah, but that's where that split comes from, and that was non-negotiable with them. They said, absolutely not. Right, but, but like I said before, who, who benefits from the lake? People come to Acton, they come to Shapley. They, they, they spend their money here. They spend their money in the restaurants and businesses in the town. What does Sanford get from it? That's what I'm saying. And then, the, well, let me finish. Let, let, let me finish. Let me finish. The $100,000, I don't know what you're talking about, $100,000. you are not going to go out and ask the, the voters for $100,000. This is possibly $10,000 a year, just like they're doing in Shapley. It's not all of a sudden you're going to ask for $100,000. So how you can come up with a figure of 18 cent increase in the taxes? They were scratching their heads over there about that one. You because you're not talking about, that's over a 10 year period, possibly. Yes, Mr. Kelly, but if your tax rate is increased by 1.8 cents, over the course of 10 years, that is 18 cents in tax effect. Over 10 years. And I, Mr. Kelly, it's, I wanted the equal split to be with tax effect. Why it is, the town of Sanford does benefit from our lake system. The people that come here and they spend the summers on those lakes, we don't have businesses for them to spend their money in. Where do they go? They go to Sanford. They go to Smitty's to the movies. They go to the bowling alley. They go shop in the plazas there. They go to the Walmart, the grocery store. We don't have services. Sanford is our service center. And I'm very respectful of the fact that that means that they have a greater um, infrastructure cost and that they, they do, so we do benefit from having a service center nearby. Sanford also benefits from having a lake community nearby that provides them with 3,000 additional buyers each summer. 
but but like I say again, I'll say it again. We do have businesses in the town. First of all, we have the Act and Trading Post. We have big, well, not big daddies anymore. And and you know the other place. We have the Shed and the Trading yeah. Post. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so so people do spend their money in the town. And then the other thing, like I say, is the town benefits from the tax dollars they're getting from these properties. If something should happen, you know, we're not going to have any say in lake levels. Did you we're not going to have any say in maintenance. We, you know, the town benefits. It's 75% of the tax base. The House and Lake Association, I believe, will have say because they will be represented through their Shapley connection. Also, did you hear the proposal by Mr. Green that we handle the increase in cost by simply setting up a tax district around our lake and increasing the tax rate for the people in the lake? Community? Yes, I, I did hear that, yeah. I don't think that that would be very reasonable. I don't think it would be constitutional. <laughs> um, actually, tax districts, I believe, are allowed in the state of Maine. I don't think that that's a good solution. And what Bill said about not thinking it was going to pass on town floor, the warrant that we bring onto the town floor is our warrant. It means that what we put on there, we're going to get up and defend. And through our negotiations, we were not willing to get up and defend that. So to put it forward to, onto the warrant and to stand up at town meeting and say, we're putting it forward, but we don't support this or defend it, is disingenuous if nothing else. Well, you know, like I say, I, I just don't feel as though, you know, the decision should have been made by three individuals because it does affect a lot of people. There are a lot of people that live year-round on the lakes. It affects them. It affects me, my property value. I sure don't want to, you know, look out and see a mud hole. And it wasn't, you know, if this happens, it's when it's going to happen. It's happened before. Have I mean, you seen our budget committee meetings thus far this year? I've watched them on TV, yes. So you are aware that we are asking the people to start a capital reserve account where we will put $5,000 per year in for the maintenance of the Emory Mills and the Square Pond Dam? No, I didn't see that. That is in, That was proposed in our municipal budget hearing. The town of Acton is not interested in shirking its duties towards our neighboring towns and to the dam and to the lake community. What we are not interested in is binding ourselves but contractually to pay for one-third of the total cost of any maintenance of repairs done to the dam. We offered to rewrite the agreement so that it was only for the $10,000 yearly maintenance cost, and Sanford told us that that was of no interest to them, that $10,000 is a drop in the bucket in their, in their budget. Now this, this $5,000, uh, where is that going to go? Into a capital reserve account for the okay. dam, future dam maintenance. Now repair. what they're going to do, the towns of Shapley and Sanford, that money is going to go to Southern Maine Regional Planning. It's going to be put into an escrow account. It can't be used for anything else. Can, can the, this money that's being set aside for 5000 can it be used for other things? We have, no, it will be in a capital reserve account. It will be, that is the, the town meeting, my understanding of capital reserve accounts, and please, gentlemen, correct me if you have Just like the fire truck. The $50,000 that goes into the fire. So you wouldn't be able to, you, you wouldn't be able to use that money anywhere else because that's that's what they're going to do over there. And the other thing is, if there is any uh, profit, you know, derived, if they do put a, a generator down there at the dam, uh, Sanford's going to throw that in too. And I understand that. And they were also very clear that they do not expect it to ever produce any revenue of any form. Right. So right. I'm sorry that you feel disenfranchised by our decision. Yeah, no. I, I really am. I, you know, like I say, I just feel as though the way it was done, the, you know, an announcement in the paper, there was no public hearing, look, this is what we're, we're doing, you know, explain it to the people. And, you know, let the people hear what's going on. I mean, it, it was just like the way you did it. It's just very disappointing. I think it's a big mistake to being very short-sighted. I thank you. And um, the article in the newspaper was unfortunate. It was put in up by Sanford, clearly. Um, the reporter that wrote the article, she did make one attempt to contact me on a Monday evening right before her deadline. I'm not home on Monday evenings. Um, and I would not have given her a comment anyway without speaking to my board and finding out what we wanted to present. The the idea, Mr. Kelly, truly was meant to be more professional and not to air dirty laundry. We ready to move on, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Next is a we have a replacement quit claim deed. The quit claim deed that we signed this past fall, the recipients of that have misplaced it and they need a another copy of it. So we are going to oblige them in that. I make a motion we sign the replacement quit claim deed. I second it. All, any discussion? All in favor? Who has it? Scott. 
<laughs> Does anyone have a quick claim deed? Do I? I do. That's me. Okay. I'm not going to get witnesses. Somebody want to come up and be a witness? No, I don't think so. Oh, no. But we went through this last time. What What did we do wrong last time? Lorraine said. You had witness. me witness it along with two other people. <laughs> and and I also can we get a witness? <laughs> Only one. Nancy? One person. Come on up. Witness. Yeah, that each one of us signed in front of you. Right. I can be taught. Did <laughs> <laughs> you sign it in blue? Yes. Sure. Good. Of the thing, I'm sorry, I've forgot to tell you because I told them we would not be those ones for two oh. weeks ago. That you know, because the plan yeah. at that time was to be on the school budget, sure. so that's why we could correct that. Yeah, of course. Um, final item this evening is we have the signing of the school warrant. I make a motion we sign the school warrant as written. I was second. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? This is meeting. The okay. which meeting? Uh, school meeting? Uh, we've got that coming up in our announcements. Oh, okay. Thank you. But for a preview, please see your agenda. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day for us. Yes. It's been a long week. We're going to hit 25 hours easy this week. <laughs> Outside of our normal lives. <laughs> That's true. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bill, would you like to make our announcements this evening? Oh, hold on. Stop. I'm sorry. Any other business? <laughs> Marion wanted to speak. I, I needed to step on you again. I'm sorry. I promise to be brief. Okay. Uh, you know, we've had a campaign to try to replace the chairs here at the town hall, and I've updated it. We were up to $325. We have a, a checking account keeping very close tabs on what's being collected. Should we, we're trying to aim for about 2,500. We've had um, an anonymous donation, a very generous one. I was coming out of the post office the other day and I was stopped and handed money. People are gonna wonder what I'm <laughs> up to. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> It's quite all right. <laughs> um, we're going to be able to set up at the Lions Club breakfast and see if we can get donations there. I should wear a sign, right? <laughs> I, I think I don't think anybody will misinterpret. But anyway, we have been very successful, and I'm surprised at the at the results. But I was at a luncheon the other day. It was a nice one. We, and two ladies mentioned how cold those seats were. And I said, well, we're working on it. So anyway, and as Barbara's told you, I've said your brain can only absorb what your rear end can stand. And so we're hoping to update it. Tonight we could use them, right? Excellent. So anyway, we're pleased and it's coming along nicely. And we'll try to keep it updated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, I would pledge $100. I'll give it to uh, right. Robert. And since you're on the checking account, that'll be fine. Do you want to make it a matching uh, pledge to try to rally support? Uh, no, 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 not matching. Oh, well, I thought you, okay. I have had promises from a number of people, <laughs> so I'm sure it will. And if we get more than we need for chairs, we'll look at tables next. But we're going to update the place one way or another. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other business? Mr. Shields, announcements? Well, we have just a, just a couple of announcements today. Uh, the town school meeting uh, on April 5th at 6 p.m. in the Acton Elementary School. They'll be voting for approval of adoption of the school budget April 12th at the town hall. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
On March 26th, the memorial service at the Congregational Church at 4 p.m. for John Muir will be followed by fellowship and food in the town hall. And that concludes the announcements. Excellent. Uh, but anything else, Bill? <laughs> I have an announcement. I had told Mr. Neal at said luncheon I would make an announcement and I forgot to do so. So he's going to get more airing time by having it on cable. The um, church holiday at the school is really actively reaching out towards the members of our community that might be home during the day. Okay, so that for retirees certainly are a, one, a target audience to come and volunteer within the school. She has Tuesday mornings, they have coffee and conversation to try to get new recruits coming in and to send them off into the classrooms. Bill and his wife Sandy are part of that crew. Dick Neal is part of that crew. Um, and they're really looking to expand the numbers, wanting people to come in. Really, whatever time and skills you have to offer, if you can just sit and listen to kids read, that's really important and valuable. If you want to help with math, that's fantastic. If you want to stand at a photocopier and not have to talk to anyone, that's an option too. So um, Trish is looking at maybe holding a luncheon to try to attract even more people. She's trying to make sure not to conflict with all of the other luncheons that are circulating about. So um, if you are at all interested in meeting the next generation of humans coming up through the town, please do contact Trish at the school um, or talk to Mr. Neal or can I volunteer? Talk to Mr. Shields, um, and they will really help get you involved there. It's a great thing to do. Make a motion to adjourn. I second. No discussion needed. We adjourn.